This is the Dr. Chris Radio Horror YouTube channel returning with another fantastic horror movie review, this time based on the remake of Child's Play with Katie, the blonde in front of fear. Hello, ladies and leeches. Now, batteries are not included with my Child's Play review directed by Laurel. Lars Klevberg and starring Aubrey Plaza, Gabriel Bateman, and Brian Tyree Henry, and the voice of Chucky, Mark Hamill. You may know him from a few movies about this kid in space. I don't know. They're called Star Wars? Maybe. Uh, now, besides the name and look of the doll, and that doll does evil things, you know, that don't go in... Can't be, the, nah. Besides, yeah, besides the name and look of the doll... Uh, this is a completely different from the 1988 film. I mean, there's just huge differences. First, they go through the buddy doll is um, made um, in Vietnam, where apparently uh, they, I mean, they, they establish that very quickly, where apparently they hire homeless suicidal uh, computer geniuses to program dolls for kids because that's... Uh, what they i guess what they do there and that's what happens in the, the get-go uh now this can be somewhat of a capitalism marketing thing because to me it's like okay well that kind of screams like buy american when you see this but again i digress that's probably not what the movie was going for although it seems kind of unrealistic uh but again this is about a doll who walks and talks and kills people so we'll go with it uh aubrey plaza plays um a mom and she gets her kid who is 13 this doll again why is this happening well because they just moved he's really shy and doesn't have any friends and it's kind of a joke turns out he uh you know gets along with the doll does things to it it kind of brings him out of his shell which is actually kind of sad but um, you quickly learn that this doll, I mean, you learn from the beginning that the doll is quite evil. Uh, he gets attached to uh, his little friend, Andy. And then anytime something happens to Andy, uh, someone or something um, tends to die. Now, at first, it's, you know, people who are just assholes to Andy. You know, his mom's boyfriend, their cat. Um, and that's uh, the apartment building handyman who's like a poor man's Jack Black. As soon as I saw him, they couldn't afford Jack Black, so they got this guy who looks just like him. And you know what? That's not bad. I mean, it's not bad. It's not great to kill people. Sorry. Let me let me clarify that. It's not good to kill anything, okay? But when you're watching this film, you kind of understand why he's doing it. Then Chucky turns quickly on Andy which is sort of confusing. Uh, he also, Andy also lets him watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre when he's got friends around. So again, that's also a little confusing because now you have friends. So why are you bringing your doll? Katie. Uh, but yes. Real quick. What did you think of Mark Hamill's performance as Chucky replacing Brad Dorf? I mean, I think since it's a completely different doll, it's, it's fantastic because with Brad Dorf, you had... Um, an actual person who was supposed to be, uh, what was it? He was, his soul was inside Chucky. Yes, he so, was a uh, he was a uh, notorious um, serial killer. Serial who, killer. Who gets shot who, by uh, uh, Prince D uh, Prince Doubledorf and then transfers his soul into the doll using uh, voodoo magic. Yeah, so you've got a real person, you've got voodoo. That's a whole different Chucky. With this, I love that you had Mark Hamill and this computerized voice. Like, I thought the voice was actually one of the um, better things of the doll. What I did not like and what I really didn't buy from the get-go, there's no way that in 2019 someone would make a doll that has that mullet. I mean, that haircut for that doll was so unappealing. And when I was looking through the different Chucky's or Child's Play's movies, it's actually interesting that they had the doll look more like the doll in Child's Play 2 than in Child's Play 1. Because somehow in Child's Play 2, the doll got its hair grew longer. I don't know. But yeah, that was kind of weird. Um and it's interesting, it's interesting to see that, you know, the doll can control different things because apparently in this future, everything is connected by one. It's almost like Facebook and Instagram. Like when Facebook and Instagram goes down, um, kind of everyone's world goes to hell. 
And with this, the Chucky doll can control all this stuff in the apartment, the TV, the cameras are different things. And that was interesting. I could get along with that. What I couldn't get along with, though, was uh, how Chucky could get from one place to the other without the use of a car. Uh, like, I don't know. There were certain things, like with the mom's boyfriend, who, let's, a spoiler, I could tell that guy was a dick from looking at his face. He just has played a dick in different films. And when certain things happen, um, when he's in his car and he gets to his house, I word for word called. Um, I actually could have written that script of what happened. I called that out from the get-go. He's a jerk. But uh, it was interesting because I thought, okay, that's great. But how did this doll get from that place back to Andy's house? Because that was definitely a long, long road. Uh, the other thing... I was a little perplexed about is, and this is just logistic, um, me being a female living in a city, how in the hell did that mom afford that freaking apartment that was so huge? And why didn't they clean up that place after they moved there? I mean, she's got a job. She should have, um, she can do stuff after work. So could he, I don't know. That was kind of lazy in the film though. What didn't make sense to me is when they do, should we, should I spoil the ending? I don't know. I mean, yeah, go ahead. All right. Uh, there's a part which I can understand with Chucky being able con to control stuff in Andy's house and stuff, but what didn't make sense is how... Oh, yeah, with his, uh, ET, his, with, with his ET finger, well, right? Well, I mean, there's just stuff in uh, different places where Chucky then turns into, like, it turns, the film turns, like, into a... Uh, like Terminator 2, Skynet, Tiny Soldiers kind of hybrid, which I didn't understand that because... Um, I, I mean, don't understand. The, thing... what, what the, the biggest thing about this doll that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, and you talked about it briefly in the beginning of your review, is the, the, the switching the doll from stun to kill is similar to like The Simpsons with the possessed doll that, that Bart gets for a birthday present in the Treehouse Halloween special. They got, the repairman comes over and then just flips the switch on the back of the doll. Oh, looks like somebody except this thing, the evil. What? Yeah, exactly. That... Why is that an option? <laughs> well, yeah, that makes no... Okay, if you had told me this guy was a MIT graduate super programmer who had a crap job at a factory... And was able to just start encoding the doll with all of this extra code to make it evil and bad and do things. I would believe that. But he literally just sets it from happy to evil within just a couple of like, oh, I'm just going to switch off its parameters. And that's 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 going to do it. And I'm like, oh, no, this movie's already well, going that also, bad. Well, and it's like I said, I mean, they make him seem they make it very clear that he's a homeless person because or that he was homeless because his uh, manager says, like, I took you from the streets. I'm going to take you back there. And then they also make him look dirty and stuff like that. Well, while no one else in the factory is supposed to be dirty looking and, and stuff. And I'm like, this doesn't make much sense. Like, OK, that's fine. I guess, you know, you're on your hard luck. But, yeah, basically, he they just switched it from good to evil, which why is that an option? Right. Why would you have that be an option on a toy? For children, you know, for a minute there, I thought that the uh, the uh, building supervisor, the, the uh, for a minute there, I thought the building supervisor was Yorick von Wagenungen, whose name I completely butchered. He played Elizabeth Salander's rapist in the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the David Fincher movie, um, because they looked very similar. <laughs> but what is funny is that that actor was actually in a movie called Escape Room that we reviewed earlier this year. But no, that's not the same actor. I couldn't figure out who the hell this was who played the supervisor who has got video cameras in everyone's room. Oh, and I'm yeah. sorry, but that cop, I'm sorry. That actor might be very nice. I don't know who that is, but he is no Prince Humpledink. <laughs> oh, that's uh, Brian Tyree Henry. Yeah. I love him. But he's definitely things. not Chris. He's definitely in, not Chris Sarandon. I love him in Atlanta. But he's definitely not Chris Sarandon. No, he's not Chris Sarandon. And also, there's different things with like backstories of of characters that they kind of touch on, but then they don't explore more. Like he kind of gives a hint, like, "Oh, if you hear anyone say anything about me, just ignore it." It's like, what the hell does that mean? Why are you telling a child this? Like, what? I mean, you're a grown man. Why are you telling a child to ignore stories about you? It's like, 
that seems very sketchy. And then also, like, with Andy's, there's, like, a father figure and a picture. Like, did he leave? Did he die? Like, what's going on? Obviously, the mom is making enough money to have this pimp-ass apartment um, on what seems like not that much. But, okay, that's fine. I'm not jealous at all only of your bathroom. Like, my God. But... All my only all, thought I is my actually, only thought my only thought is about the dad is that the only reason why she could afford that apartment is dad died they got insurance money she's able to afford rent for a while she has a crap job but the insurance money's paying basically the rent for that place for quite some time because that's not a terrible apartment complex they're living in it's not like it's the ghetto or no. anything like that it's supposed to be similar to the apartment that um, Andy's mom had in the original Child's Play as well. Um, yes. uh, what is it with Which, characters named Andy and their mothers being uh, either abandoned or uh, widows? Andy from Toy Story ring a bell with talking toys, just pointing out the similarities which, between Andy which and I Andy. actually <laughs> thought this film was more necessary, like bringing ch the child's play, uh, the Chucky doll more into the light of the millennium than Toy Story 4. After I saw Toy Story 4, I probably, I don't know if I liked it better, but I actually, well, no, I may have liked it more than I liked Toy Story 4. So there you go. Mm -hmm. All, all It's all about the talking dolls. But yeah, uh, I liked De Detective Mike a lot. It's not a great movie. It's not bad. And again, it's a standalone film that has nothing. It's not the 1988 version. So, you know, try your hardest when you go in. Try not to compare it to it. And, I mean, I give it like a halfway up for Cheers for Fear. I mean, it's not going to be in my top 10 or even top 20 of the year. But, but it's not bad. Do you know mm -hmm. the name of the director of the original Child's Play and how it connects to a other movie review we just did? Uh, the original Child's Play is Tom Holland directed it and wrote it, and Tom Holland is the name of Spider-Man. Yeah. Peter Parker. What's funny is that when Tom Holland came on Radio of Horror, he said that his office got flooded with phone calls back in 2015 when they announced Tom Holland was going to be playing Spider-Man in Captain America Civil War. <laughs> That's funny. Because nobody would bother to do their research to go, wait a minute. Tom Holland's not a 60-year-old man, is he? <laughs> uh, thank you, Katie. Check out the rest of the videos here on the Radio Horror YouTube channel. Check out the uh, check out Katie's website, theblondeinfront.com. You can find this movie as well as other film uh, films at the Blackstone Valley Cinema Deluxe in Millerian, Massachusetts, or at the AMC in Framingham. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>